Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lipakshi Khurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Tuesday, the 27th of August. Prime Minister Modi returns to India after G7 summit in France. US envoy rules out end to Afghan military support in Taliban deal. A new Sri Lankan army chief denies allegations of war crimes. And now for all the details, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in capital New Delhi on Tuesday after attending G7 summit in France. He was personally invited by French President Emmanuel Macron to attend the summit, although India is not a member of the G7 grouping. On the sidelines of the G7 summit, the Prime Minister also met world leaders aimed at bolstering ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi arrived in capital New Delhi on Tuesday after attending G7 summit in France. Though India is not a member of the G7 grouping, Prime Minister Modi was personally invited by French President Emmanuel Macron to attend the summit. Modi on the sidelines of the summit met US President Donald Trump and categorically rejected any scope for third-party mediation between India and Pakistan on Kashmir issue. Apart from other world leaders, he also met British counterpart Boris Johnson on Sunday and they discussed ways to strengthen bilateral cooperation in areas like trade, investment, defence and education. Meanwhile, upon arrival, Prime Minister Modi visited the residence of former Finance Minister Arun Jaitley on Tuesday to pay tributes to the late Bharatiya Janata Party leader. 66-year-old Jaitley passed away after a prolonged illness at Delhi's Ames Hospital on August 24. He was cremated on August 25 with full state honours. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has threatened a nuclear war with India over the Kashmir issue. In an address to the nation on Monday evening, Khan said Pakistan would go to any extent on the issue, calling India's move to change the constitutional status of Jammu and Kashmir a huge blunder. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan has once again threatened nuclear war with India over the issue of Kashmir. In an address to the nation on Kashmir on Monday evening, Khan said Pakistan would go to any extent on the issue, calling India's abrogation of special status to Jammu and Kashmir and bifurcating it into two union territories a huge blunder. He said United Nations now has a responsibility to ensure that the people of Kashmir have the right to decide their own future. If the problem is going on the war, then remember that the nuclear weapons have both countries. And the nuclear weapons will not win, but it doesn't mean that it will go here too. It will go on the world. That's why the responsibility of the world is on the world and on the world community. Khan's statement came after Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi told US President Donald Trump on Monday on the sidelines of G7 summit in France that there was no space for any country to mediate between the bilateral issues facing India and Pakistan. Modi also met UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres in France on Sunday and told him that Kashmir is an internal matter and no step has been taken that in any manner threatens regional peace. Moving on, residents of Masthang district of Pakistan's Balochistan province have claimed to have been facing an acute water shortage for the past three months. They have blamed, despite the dire situation, the authorities have continued to neglect them. Residents of Mastung district of Pakistan's Balochistan province have claimed they have been facing an acute shortage of water. Balochistan has been facing groundwater stress for decades as levels continue to decline due to decreasing rainfall, increasing temperatures, prolonged droughts and a growing number of tube wells. Locals blame despite the dire situation, the issue really catches the attention of the Pakistani government. 
They believe that poor management is a greater issue than depleting water reserves. Our water is not coming from three months. We are taking water from two kilometers. Shortage of water and failure of for the crops have also had a devastating impact on livestock. Activists have long blamed that Baloch people are denied even basic amenities and if they raise their voices, they are subjected to torture by the Pakistani security forces. U.S. Special Envoy for Peace Zalmay Khalilzad has said the United States will continue to back Afghan forces now and after a deal with Taliban. This comes as Khalilzad has begun the ninth round of talks since last year with the Taliban in Doha. U.S. Special Envoy for Peace Zalmay Khalilzad on Monday said the United States will defend Afghanistan's security forces now and after any agreement with the Taliban. Khalil Zad, who began the ninth round of talks with the Taliban in Qatar, made the statement on Twitter while denying reports that the U.S. had agreed to end support for Afghan security forces as part of their deal. He said that all sides agree Afghanistan's future will be determined in intra-Afghan negotiations. The U.S. and the Taliban officials have been negotiating in Qatar since last year on an agreement centered on a timeline for foreign forces withdrawal from Afghanistan counter-terrorism assurances and intra-Afghan dialogue. Some 14,000 U.S. troops remain in Afghanistan training and advising Afghan forces and conducting counter-insurgency operations. About 17,000 troops from NATO allies and partners make up a NATO-led train, advise, assist mission called Resolute Support in Afghanistan. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's new army commander has denied that he or his troops violated human rights during the country's 26-year-long war against Tamil Tiger rebels. His appointment had sparked criticism in the island nation and also globally. Sri Lanka's new army commander Shavendra Silva denied on Monday that he or his troops violated human rights during the final phase of the war against Tamil Tiger rebels. The appointment of 55-year-old Silva, a key military leader during the final phase of the island nation's 26-year-long war, drew flak from the United States, United Nations and local and international civil society groups. Silva told reporters at the Colombo Defence Seminar 2019 that this is not the first time that allegations have been made and that he respects the decision made by the President. Countries can have concerns of course, due to various reasons. But uh, His Excellency the President has appointed me as the commander of the army. I'm sure he would have considered the requirement of the nation. So I respect and accepted uh, the decision taken by the command. Following the flak, the government defended the appointment with the foreign ministry saying, it was a sovereign decision taken by Sri Lanka's President Metripala Sirisena. A United Nations panel has accused Silva's army division of suspected extrajudicial executions of unarmed rebels in the final week of the war which ended in 2009 and systematic torture of people in custody. Moving on to news from Nepal, Nepal Communist Party held its first secretariat meeting on Monday and made a major decision to bar its leaders from speaking against the party and the leadership. The first ever secretariat meeting of the ruling Nepal Communist Party on Monday made a major decision to bar its leaders from speaking against the party in public. Pushpa Kamal Dahal chaired the secretariat meeting for the first time since the formation of the party last May in absence of Prime Minister K.P. Sharma Oli. The restriction is one of the major decisions which the leadership had taken over dissenting voices that were being made in public on social media and other platforms local media reported. Some leaders of the party claimed the leadership has never allowed them to air their views in party meetings, hence they are forced to raise the issues in public. The Nepal Communist Party was founded in May last year from the unification of the CPN-UML and CPN-Maoist Center. As part of the merger agreement, the party's ideology will consist of support for a multi-party system in Nepal, while the party itself will remain secular and governed by democratic centralism. 
However, Nepal Communist Party-led government has been criticized for its intolerant approach. A girl from Rajuri district of India's Jammu and Kashmir has become the first woman from her village to qualify the entrance test to study medicine at Ames, the country's premier health institute. She cleared the national level exam in a first attempt without any coaching. Irmeem Shamim, a girl from Dhanor village of Rajauri district in India's Jammu and Kashmir, has become the first woman from her area to qualify the entrance exam to study medicine at the prestigious All India Institute of Medical Sciences or AIMS. She cleared the national level AIMS 2019 entrance exam for MBBS in her first attempt without any coaching. Irmim, who belongs to a poor economic background, said she worked hard beating all adversities to make it to the country's premier health institute. I would like to say that nothing is impossible, but you need to do hard work. As long as you do hard work, you need to get the fruit of it. And this is not a lot of difficult or tough, but you don't have to do it. There are parents who say that they don't have to do it, but I have more focus on the child's daughter. Because the child is not less than anyone. If you study one child, then the whole family is studied. उसके पूरे मतलब माशरे की पढ़ाई है। इरमीम शमीम्स फैमिली हैप्पी विथ हर अचीवमेंट वांट्स टू सी हर बिकम ए सक्सेसफुल डॉक्टर एंड सर्व द पीपल ऑफ जम्मू एंड कश्मीर एंड द कंट्री। लोकल अथॉरिटीज इंक्लूडिंग रजौरी डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स डिप्यूटी डेवलपमेंट कमिश्नर हैज आल्सो अप्रिशिएटेड � a group of scientists in India's Pune city have developed a technology to detect the early spread of cancer and have claimed it is the fastest in the world. The technology can also help establish the overall survival rate of cancer patients. A team of scientists from Pune city of India's western Maharashtra province have developed a technology which can detect cancer at an early stage. The new technology, which the scientists have termed as OncoDiscover, has been developed by a team led by Dr. Jayant Khandare, who claims that the technology can help establish the overall survival rate of cancer patients. Khandare said that OncoDiscover can speed up cancer detection process. This technology you need to detect early metastasis. So, if we can detect early metastasis, तो ये 90 परसेंट जो इंसिडेंसेस जो डेथ होते हैं या सर्वाइवल उनका जो बहुत कम होता है इसको जल्दी डिटेक्ट करके उस पेशेंट को हम अच्छे से ट्रीट किया जा सकते हैं। It takes 12 days for development of final diagnosis report of detection of cancer in patients, whereas Onco Discover can detect the same in three and a half hours. According to the National Institute of Cancer Prevention and Research. Cancer is the second most common cause of death in India and more than 700,000 people died in the country due to cancer in 2018. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Prime Minister Modi returns to India after G7 summit in France. U.S. envoy rules out end to Afghan military support in Taliban deal. And new Sri Lankan army chief denies allegations of war crimes. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash Newsline and follow us on Twitter at Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.